know. Okay, next tutorial. This time I'm dressed up as a humanoid demon pig warrior. Yeah. <laughs> what the? F I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Honestly, I think you can tell this is the kind of makeup where I sat down and made it up as I went along. <laughs> but I'm really happy with the overall effect, especially with the costume, bringing it together. It kind of creates its own backstory, like I'm kind of a pig worker in hell. That sounds strange, but you get the idea. <laughs> but I can honestly say I had so much fun doing this makeup. It's so silly. So if you'd like to learn how to do this piggy makeup for yourself, stay tuned. So to get this video started, I'm going to want to get rid of all of my hair. So I'm going to be popping on a plain latex ball cap. So as per usual, I'll be popping a link on the screen up there. That link will take you to the video that I did in the past to teach you how to pop on a ball cap. That way I don't have to show you it in this video step by step and it saves a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go pop on my ball cap and we'll go from there. And there we go, one ball cap applied. I also went around the edge of the cap with about two layers of liquid latex just to blend off that edge completely. So then I can talk to you about the prosthetics that I'm gonna be using. So I'm going to be using two prosthetics for this, both are made out of foam latex. One is a full face prosthetic and the other one is for the ears. I got both of these prosthetics from MostlyDead.com, I'll pop that link on the screen there if you wanted to check them out, they've got some fabulous prosthetics. And the face prosthetic that I'm going to be using is this guy. Yeah, he's oddly cute, I don't know why. <laughs> so as you can see here, it's a kind of humanoid, really angry pig prosthetic. I just love that nose, look at that. <laughs> I love the details around the mouth, specifically the, I guess you could even say these are moles, or you could say they're spots, I'm not sure what I'm going to turn them into yet. And the other prosthetic that I'm going to be using, as I mentioned, is some ears. So I could have got actual pig shaped ears, but I really wanted to try something that's a tiny bit more demonic, if that makes sense. And I thought these are a nice halfway point between the two. Technically these are labelled as monster ears. Hopefully you can see what I mean, because the shape is relatively pig ear shaped, but they stick out nice enough and they're big enough that they could be kind of demonic, like that halfway demonic pig look. I just made that look up, but there it is. <laughs> so rather than having two little flappy ears, I thought it'd be fun to have some demonic big ears. Plus, look at the texture in them. I really like this design. And as always, the fabulously thin latex edges, perfect for blending. So I'll just quickly mention MostlyDead.com again, in case you wanted to get some of these for yourself. There's also a link in the description bar below that will get you a discount off your order. So to apply foam latex prosthetics, I like to use Pro Stick, which is a really strong prosthetic adhesive. And I apply that with a cotton bud. So I dip the cotton bud in the Pro Stick. And if I'm doing a particularly large prosthetic, like a full face prosthetic, I like to apply it in the middle area first and then apply it to the corresponding area. So the nose to the nose. I let it go a little bit tacky for about 10 seconds and I press it down against my nose until it bonds. And then we can start applying some Pro Stick directly on the face away from the nose area, working in small areas at a time, lining the prosthetic up and sticking it down. That way there's no air bubbles or no ridges and it just feels nice and natural. So I'm just gonna go start applying my prosthetic. So once the prosthetic is fully applied, I can take some more Pro Stick on a cotton bud and I can start applying that to all of the edges around the piece, around the mouth and around the eyes. The idea is to apply a small amount rolling away from the edges so that we don't lift them up. That way when it dries, it seals them nicely and it blends them off into the skin. So then, once I'm happy with all the edges, I can start applying the ears in exactly the same way that I did with the face. So I apply some Pro Stick to my ear and the corresponding area to the prosthetic, let it go tacky, hold it down, then I go around the entire edge with another layer of Pro Stick. So there we are, that's everything nicely blended. So next we can start colouring in the base. So whenever I use makeups that use quite large prosthetics, I like to use alcohol activated palettes just because you can layer them up and it makes the whole thing look a lot more translucent and natural if that makes sense. It helps detract away from any edges and it makes the character look more alive and less flat. So the palette that I'm going to be using for this is one of Neil Galton's Life Colour palettes, it's the Essential palette. 
It's just got some really nice skin tones in there and the really important pink that I want to use. So the way these colours work is they're only activated with 99% alcohol. So I'm going to layer them up, starting with the pink, applying it in random areas, not one block area, because I want there to be different hints of colour shining through and I want to break up the complexion. So I'm going to start with the pink and then layer it out with different colours until it starts blending in to become its own complexion. The tone I'm going for is this kind of pale pinky peach colour. Okay, so I'm still in the middle of layering everything up. I just wanted to stop for a second to explain what I'm gonna be doing around the nose, the mouth, and the eyes. I'm gonna be taking a different alcohol activated palette. This is a Skin Illustrator one in American Horror Story. And I'm gonna take this really dark purple color on a small but really fluffy brush and apply that staggering around the nose and slightly going up around the eyes and over the lips. I don't want it to be a block color, I just want it to fade off. You can do this with creams if you wanted to, but whilst I'm layering everything up, I thought it would be easier to use an alcohol activated color. Then before I do any more layering, I'm going to take a firm brush and a brown colour from the Life Colour Essential palette and I'm going to colour all of these raised areas around the mouth to make them moles. So then I'm going to work on the expression line, so all of these lovely wrinkles around the eyes, the brow furrow, around the nose and mouth. So to do that I'm going to use the same brown alcohol activated colour that I used for the moles. You could absolutely use a brown cream instead, it's completely what you prefer. And I'm going to take that colour on a sharp angle brush and start highlighting all of these wrinkles. Then I'm going to take a Makeup Forever Flash palette, but you only really need the red from this palette. And I'm going to use that to go really close to the underside of my eyes. Then finally, just to break up the complexion a little bit more, I'm going to take a fairly large concealer brush and I've dipped it in the same brown alcohol colours I used for the moles and the wrinkles. And I'm just going to use my thumb and spackle the colour across my face in various areas just to act as different age spots and just to break up any join lines. So there we are, as you can see it kind of looks like broken capillaries in certain areas around the ears and the cheeks and I just think it's a cool effect. So then in theory you could keep layering up and layering up this makeup depending on the effect you want but for me I think I'm done at this point. I think the next step really is to pop in some contact lenses, pop on a costume and we'll see what it looks like. And there we go, that's my look officially complete. So I'll finish the look off by popping in two Sclera contact lenses that I got from scleraxl.com. I'll pop that link in the description bar below. They're these two bloodshot scleras that I really think help complete the look. I popped in some fake teeth, which is why it's a little bit difficult for me to talk right now. These are actually from amazon.co.uk. And the costume is from buycostumes.com. That link will also be in the description bar below as well. I've actually had this costume for a while and I've been trying to think of something I could do with it. And today, for some bizarre reason, I decided I want to do a waiter that's a pig demon. <laughs> Please don't make me explain my creative process. This is just what I wanted to do and I thought it'd be fun. <laughs> I just think the costume helps add to the kind of backstory of this character, especially considering how it's all humanoid and it just adds an extra element to the look, I think. I can absolutely honestly say without a shadow of a doubt, I had so much fun doing this makeup. It's so absurd and silly. I just love it. <laughs> So yeah, I really hope you all enjoyed this makeup. If you did like it, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe and all that jazz. And yeah, so until next time, bye fluffies.